Number one. Oh boy. I have a superpower where whenever I say something to a group, no one has a response. Every time like clockwork. Tell me more about this because this is such a funny goddamn setup. At the cocktail party, you know, there's a semicircle going on of six people or whatever, and we're talking this or that, and then I'm, I'm like, oh, I'll say my thing when there's a moment, and I say it, whatever it is, and... Is it risky? Not to me. I don't think it is, but it's just is jarring to people, or they can't think of what to say, or they've been trained, like, don't touch that. Like, I wouldn't say it's, I'm not going like the Holocaust didn't happen. I'm not right. saying that, but I'll, I'll say something. You'll say that on your blog. Yeah, yeah exactly. I have a tattoo of that. <laughs> but I'll just say something. I'll throw it out there. Like, I want to be included. I want to par- partake and just, so wait, oh, is there a dip over there? Like, it'll, it'll shift real quick after I talk. That's I, so funny. I don't know what it is. I wish I had a good example, but, uh, you know, like you go. Is your wife mad afterward? No, she's cool. That's why we're together. Because yeah. she's like, I saw that. That was bad. And she'll try to help. Yeah. Which is so nice. And that's love right there. Yeah. But, whoo, it's ugly. You know, like, I'll be like, we'll be talking about a TV show. And I'm like, hey, you know, that actor, uh, he got in trouble for diddling kids. And <laughs> to me, I'm not like, I'm just saying a fact. Yeah. I'm not condoning diddling kids. But they're like, all right, are those uh, cocktail weenies done? You know, or whatever. So it'll just you, well, ruin this, it. This is the, because we have cable. Ah. there's a better metaphor than cable that's an old reference but i can entertain and you i'm betting you can entertain a level of darkness death oh yeah the fun pedophile trivia yeah (laughs) horrible board game yeah (laughs) um for most people we love it yeah um (laughs) so that's the thing you have to almost like not dumb it down but you have to almost be mainstream yes for like a certain audience but in my mind i'm saving this boring dull uh, conversation with like this is it this is good stuff yes i'm giving you good meat to talk about they don't like talking about that stuff i know which is so because we like the news right we love well they they like will smith slaps chris rock they don't like ukraine right they like right. the dumb news they like the puppy save the senior center right right. but, but they don't want like hardcore i guess so here's my question about what this is forever or this is adulthood probably adulthood you know because that's when you really have to be like have airs about you and we have to be respectable and all that so as a kid you just fart and it was fine but now you can't really do that so I'm going, hey, this is some hot goss I'm throwing at you here. How about this? And I thought people would go, really? Yeah. Whoa. So then it's even more of a drop because I assume it's going to kill and it gets zero. <laughs> and it is, I'm a party shutter down. So and, I and like comics. Number one block. I like to be liked. Yeah. Okay. That Why suck? is that a block? Well, because it uh, it bothers me. You know, you read stuff online or you uh, mostly just stuff online where you're just so like, you don't, why, I, okay. I got, I'm why are you, mean. why would you say such mean things? Like, I'm just trying to do funny stuff and whether you d- dislike it, like, I, I guess I'm not the type of person that would dislike something and then have to go tell that person. Yes. So it, it does, it so does bug me more I, than I want it to, but I mean, it's not ruining my the life. The issue but. isn't to me. I read the issue as because I have we all have it right yeah. we the every human being wants to be liked for sure we have a place that called the comment section mm-hmm. <laughs> or Twitter or whatever where we the problem is when we start like so what do you guys think yeah and then well that's within it. that by the way the ratio is still ten to one like if not fifty to one like uh huh but the I just had to stop I just have a I just stop first of all, blocking words, block words. You can do it on YouTube. You can do it on Twitter threads. Really? Yeah. You can block words. Oh, wow. Can I suggest some things you might want to block? Sure. Okay. <laughs> and then I started. Yeah. You had just uh, uh, okay. chubby face, neck fat. Uh, ch- ch- yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. You, so you, so you, you get it. <laughs> okay. So, you know, um, all right. So yeah. So you can block words. 
Huge. Wow. Huge. Yeah, cool. Um, so, and, and also you can't give yourself access to it. It's not that often. Most times I brush it off, but then every once in a while you're like, you work so hard on a thing and then, you know, people say mean shit or just like a review and you're like, how, how do you hate it this badly? Like it, <laughs> it doesn't seem like, yeah, like it, there's that, why do you have so much hate for this thing? Yeah. It uh, seems like you could just go on with your day and continue to live your life and not even think twice about this thing. Right. But that's where your kind of good looking comes in. That's where yeah. success comes in. That's where like you always seem tan. No one likes that. <laughs> um, yeah. And like there's just a lot of things that people are basically they're just jealous. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm no. And I, I don't with... say that like jealous much like I get it. I'm jealous of plenty of people. Yeah. So I don't now I don't snap at them on Instagram or I or whatever like will I send a hate you will will I send yep. like a <laughs> will I send it to my group chat you know I will <laughs> but I'm not gonna you're never gonna know about it yeah thank you Neil and the <laughs> so you know um so the other the other thing I would say is it's like a if we don't solicit it we can't see it if we don't need the if we don't have the hunger we're well, never going to see the negative comment. The issue is, is like when my agents or managers will send me like a good review. I think I know where you're going. And Keep you're going. like, oh, hell yeah. Like, look at this. And then you're like, and the good reviews are going to, are rolling in, Now baby. we wait. Get gobble, me my neck gobble, pillow. Gobble, gobble. <laughs> gobble, gobble. And then you hmm. start to read the reviews and hmm. you're like, well, this was the one. You sent me the one. And the yeah, rest of them. You can't ever read reviews yeah. you literally just no, I, I had a when this is how long i've known this when me and dave were writing half baked this is how fucking long ago this is there was a article about woody allen in the new yorker that this is how long ago this was mm -hmm. about how great he was and one of the, the quote and i had it on my wall it was like allen saves his anxiety for action and he said like don't read reviews just keep your head down and do the work. And I, that's right. That's I, the good again, advice. that's like the best. Yeah. And that's all I know about Woody Allen. Uh, <laughs> so, but do I look, they, sometimes they leak in, but I, I, the thing you were saying about like, they send you a review and they sent it to you. Cause it's, it, that's why they would send it. Yeah. It's the good one. <laughs> Cause if they're all good, then they're not going to send you a hundred. Yeah. Link. I have to, and you it's, also, still the, it, it's still the good review that they sent me, which was so funny, dude. It was the New York Times, and it said, Adam Devine is funny at last. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Which I li I liked. I'm like, that's funny. It's also. it's also, Like, it's a funny uh, backhanded, like, he liked the movie. Yeah. But it, well, there's always in every one, every positive review has a, but I ain't no bitch paragraph. Yeah. Like, at the, good review of the movie, and they're like, but by the way. He's some of yeah, these, sometimes some, he's awful. He yeah. does an accent one of the scenes. Yeah. <laughs> that's a I'm fucking really embarrassment. Yeah. Despite that, over like, there's always this yeah, like that's look, true. Looky here. So, but yeah, but that's you know that's why you moved I, out here though. I is to feel be like so you have to you know yeah. No one dislikes you in person. That's mm -hmm. the thing. It's all, no one's gonna say any. Did someone say sell out to you in person? No, no one's <laughs> ever said that in person. So two comments. Yeah. And you're and can, like, <laughs> it can really ruin your day. No, yeah, but but I I feel I'm I'm a pretty well adjusted person. I do too. So uh, it doesn't really. It's just you know you 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 made me write a list of five things that yeah. uh, no. kind of bummed me out. So I was like, yeah, yeah, kind of no, like it. Out. You are a well adjusted person from what I understand. But that is the thing of will you stop? Will you change your behavior slightly, n knowing? Like, hey, this hurts my feelings. Well, I'm about like a, a solid decade in of creating television shows and yeah. movies. And uh, I, I've yet to stop. So I don't know. <laughs> you know, I feel like every time Probably I'm like, happen. and this is going to be the one that I won't. Uh, this is going to be. No, it's every time it's this is the time that every critic is going to be hop on board. 
Finally and then you look and you're like, fuck. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, but then you meet these critics and you're like, well, this movie isn't for you. You're like yeah. 70 years old. You're like, you're you're comparing me to like Mickey Rooney <laughs> and like Jack Lemon, which like I like cool. both of those. Very yeah. cool. And and you know, I me being in the industry, I really I know who those people are, but like people are in their twenties and thirties don't know who those people are in at fact, this point. Yes. Yes. So that so I'm like it's just sort of a generational thing, too. And also, you meet Adam Sandler, who's never gotten good reviews. Yeah, exactly. And you're like, huh, would I rather be him mm -hmm. or I? And then there's really no or because he can do great movies when he wants and he can do his family, like his like big fun. happy Madison, yeah. silly, cool movies and be like a great dude. Yeah. It's like, though, that yeah, seems he's, like he's he's one of my true heroes, that guy. An ideal, like that's an ideal outcome. Yeah. So, or, I mean, the, the, also think about who was famous when Sandler broke it. I mean, it's amazing. Like Jim Carrey doesn't even make movies anymore, hardly. I know. Um, Sucks. Yeah. Stiller doesn't really make movies anymore. He's directing. He's doing cool stuff. Yeah, no, cool, I know. Cool but stuff, I'm, but but I'm yeah, saying right. like, it's not even like the fact that Adam's still doing He's it. He's like the one guy still churning out comedy yes. movies, which is in the world awesome. on earth. And you. Yeah. <laughs> People pleasing. Which, surprising. Do you ever feel like a power broker? Because you can help people so clear. You help, mm. you like, I don't want to say you made people stars, but you champion I think without people. you. Yeah, you champion people. And then, did you ever feel that? Because it seems counter to people pleasing. Meaning people wanted yeah. to please you so that you'd yeah. help them become a star. I think people pleasing is always more just in the moment, you know, with everybody, with just like a general, is everyone okay with me? Like, I love that book, The Untethered Soul. Have you mm -hmm. ever read that book? Uh, I think Michael I've Singer's downloaded book. it and not read it. Yeah, but so it's, it's just all about how it, you have an irrational expectation that you can make every single moment of your life work perfectly. Mm -hmm. That the person will like you, that you'll say the right thing, that everything will be fine. And it's completely irrational. And so you're almost on eggshells trying to handle everything all the time. Like everything's okay as long as I don't screw anything up. And right. I think that's a destructive headspace to be in. It's better to go, you know what? I'm a good person. I'm doing my best. Yeah, like I can just relax. Approximately, like we'll throw the throw the dart and it, yeah. it'll land on the board somewhere. Yeah, I'm just fine. If like, I don't need to obsess like that. Like I, I that that's destructive to, to be in that type of headspace. I thought of that a lot this year about texting because <laughs> during COVID, I got insecure because I thought, the people who haven't checked in on me don't care if I die, right? <laughs> like it was almost too clear a thing. Like there were certain people that were like, how are you holding up? And then there were people that you like that you did not hear from in those two or three years. And you thought, wow, I'm not even on their list. Of don't die. Uh, yeah, for a check-in, yeah. like a health check-in. Yeah. And I started getting neurotic about it. And then I thought a lot about, well, who am I checking in with? Right. And almost in a manic way, I got very neurotic about it. And then. Did you make a list? No, I never made a list, but I just, I, I was aware and I felt bad about it. And then I realized, well, I'm doing it to people too, because you, we all know too many people. Like when you're in comedy, yeah. we know hundreds of people. Yes. But one day I was uh, not sober and it just hit me like, I'm going to forgive myself. And I'm going to forgive everyone and have no expectation for that. Only in the realm of texting. <laughs> in the <laughs> realm of like how often we all make contact with each other. Yeah. Because I feel like, especially in our business, you might go on the road with somebody and have a very intimate yeah. week with someone. And then two years later, you're like, I haven't talked to them <laughs> since like we talked for like seven hours a day yeah. for a week. Yeah. And there is a place in you where you could feel bad about it, but it's also irrational to think of the hundreds of people you're interacting with. And every time I make a movie, the crew's a hundred people. Yeah. So if I make 20 movies, 2000 people, uh, it, it, that doesn't really make any sense. So I decided to let myself completely off the hook in that. And it really made me feel better all year. 
I mean, and I don't know if anyone, I don't. That's a, I, I've never had that issue. Meaning, I just see this. I see sh- like comedy show business as like I say, it's like a cruise ship. Yeah. And sometimes I see you on the Lido deck, <laughs> and then I won't see you. Yeah. I saw you when you were doing your producer skill thing yeah. in what was it February? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now it's August. Hadn't seen you. I assumed you were yeah. good. Mm-hmm. Jimmy said he saw you. Yeah. I'll see you. I'll see you. I'll see you on the whatever the, the podcast deck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but we text. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because I don't want you to die. Exactly. But that's nice that you forgave yourself. And what what were you not sober on? That's a very good question. Uh, although I have to say, like, you know, we've talked a lot about everything that's happening with the uh, mind expanding things. Ayahuasca uh, and MDMA and mushrooms. And all that. And I, I definitely think uh, just great stuff to be learned from all of it i'm fascinated by it i don't i haven't had the the ayahuasca courage yet but i i think it's in my future you would love it it's you know it's gary connected Mm -hmm. it's it's it it is that world Mm -hmm. it's a deeper level it's arguably the deepest level of that sort of mind shift and spiritual connection yeah. It's the the most actual palpable longest term one you can do. Like seven hours of direct contact and then you keep it with you. Man, does that scare me. <laughs> Which is the reason to do it. So I'm going to work up to it. Well, what about it scares you? I think- because that you're already there. You're already like constantly kind of swimming in it. Yeah. Well, that's, that's what I think I need to get my head around. I guess there's, I used to have panic attacks. Uh-huh. And so there's a part of me that, it's afraid of experiences which i cannot end you can but it's going to be a while <laughs> exactly <laughs> it's food poisoning well it's, you know what it is uh, it's surrender yeah it's letting go which i think is maybe the most important lesson or block for me to learn to really let go i remember i was on a plane once to australia and i had this very very strong feeling the most spiritual feeling i've ever had in my life of a voice saying, surrender, surrender. And it was, I don't even know what it was. It was unlike any moment I've ever had. And I feel like ayahuasca in a way is the, but is did you watch is. the little Richard documentary? Yes, I did. He had a, on a flight to Australia as well. It, what was it? He found God basically, or yeah. he like went back to God. Mm-hmm. He also like disavowed his sexuality. Yeah. which I was hope I was hoping you would do but um stop being straight yes hey did you like that did you like that yeah did you like it though you want more don't want to work would rather watch videos of me grab assing with people first of all go up here to subscribe and then go up here to uh watch more clips this is like when the weatherman says that there's a high pressure system coming in although I'm not really used to the green screen